I hey, Trey. That's an unbelievable backdrop. I'm assuming it's like virtual. <laughs> it's virtual. It's virtual. Um, everyone keeps thinking it's real, but I'm just like, I'm trying to get like, you know, this earthy, you know, forest, like moss backdrop. So um, <laughs> I like Beautiful. it. Beautiful. Yes, thank you. I'm so excited to chat about um, Reminiscence with you. Um, I enjoyed it so much. And, you know, I feel like it's one of the highly anticipated films um, coming into this year. So, so we're so excited to see it finally um, come thank out you. now. I wanted to know what drew you to the project? I mean, and also, you know, it's also Lisa Joy's um, debut feature as well. So um, what drew you to the project and how is it working with her on such a monumental um, milestone project? Before I, before I read the script, Lisa came to my house and she told me the story of how she came to write it, why she was writing it. She showed me some images that she had in her head. I was already super intrigued. And then I was 20 pages into the script and I knew that I was going to do it because the writing is so good. Mm -hmm. The ideas are so good. It, I think what really intrigued me about it was how unique it was. I really felt I knew what the film was going to be 10, 15 pages into reading it. And then I realized very quickly, I had no idea where I was going. And I thought that is something that I want as a movie goer. I want something original, a type of movie I haven't seen. I want to be surprised along the way. And then I want to think about it a few days later. So all those elements I felt were there. There's thematically some really cool ideas or a memory about are we really seeing people for who they are? Nostalgia, um, some themes about, you know, climate change and about inequality and lots of things that are resonating today. And at the same time, it's part romance, it's part sci-fi, it's part thriller, it's part action movie. It just, I it felt it had a confidence to it and it was a departure from anything I'd read or been in. Yeah. And what can you tease about um, your character of Nick Bannister and um, the journey um, and character arc that he goes through um, throughout the film? Nick is a very, at the beginning of the movie, think Humphrey Bogart, you know, <laughs> in one of those sort of film noirs, very tough, impenetrable exterior. Mm -hmm. Inside, there's a lot of brokenness, a lot of pain. Um, in that way, I guess there's some similarities to Wolverine. There's that, that sort of tough, guy exterior but there's definitely a brokenness and then he meets this woman and that torrid love affair becomes an obsession and and she goes she has disappeared he has no idea what's going on and he ends up into this very sort of going down to this dark alleys you know metaphorically into the underworld of Miami so I think playing a character that is so closed off and so early on in the story has his heart ripped open and then somehow broken again, you know, all within 20, 30 pages. I, I found that to be, I, I think that's how I would tease the character. Yes, yes. Well, I'm so excited for everyone to watch the film. And I appreciate you were talking to me today. I can't wait for everyone to see it. Thanks, Troy. Thank good you. on you, man. Hi, Rebecca. How are you? I'm good. What is this backdrop? Is it real? <laughs> it's not real. And so many people think that it's real. I think because it's like, you don't really tell that it's virtual. But No, um, it's you look like you're in a tree house. <laughs> it's not for four minutes, but it looks fantastic. Hi. Yes, hello, hello. I'm so excited to chat with you um, about this film. I really enjoy it so much. So first I wanted to ask you, what drew you to this film, especially because it's the highly anticipated feature debut of Lisa Joy, um, when it inspired you to come board the film and also um, working with Lisa on the project as well? Uh, the script, number one, drew me to it. It was complex. I didn't get it. I like when I don't get scripts. That means it's <laughs> intelligent, probably. Um, Lisa Joy's vision of describing a script that I didn't understand and coloring in the corners and edges and, and just making this world come to life verbally over a phone, her in America and me in London, and me just feeling that I wanted to be a part of this journey of this nocturnal sort of twisted reality that questions everything. And, and you know, it was a fantastic role for me to be able to challenge myself in. Yeah, 
Yeah. Without revealing too much, what can you tease about your character of May, um, her dynamic with um, Nick's, Nick and her trajectory as the film goes on? It's a very complex film to describe and to promote, <laughs> I have realized. But what I do, what I enjoy, and what would kind of sell it to me is that it's a film about the, in what is the eye of the beholder? For example, we follow this journey into this dark underworld of, of, of Miami's drug lords and God knows what, because of the devotion, maybe even addiction of an idea of a woman that Nick played by Hugh Jackman has. And the question keeps on, um, throwing all of these hinders your way of, is it actually the person that you believe she is? There are roles within roles, you know, who are we really? Um, and I got to play with all of these characters, the, the dream of the perfect, um, you know, seduce, seduces, is that a word? Um, um, seductress, I think that's it. Seductress, thank you, of the perfect seductress or, mm -hmm. Who we are when the door is closed and you break down you know it's 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 very relatable isn't it yeah and um shout out to i've been telling all the cast and lisa you know shout out to the way y'all describe this film because it is a hard film <laughs> to describe because it's just you would you wouldn't expect you know the different places it goes going in and it's just hard oh. to pinpoint a theme so um i think that anyone by looking at the film may think they have an idea of like oh this is like this a post-apocalyptic type of thing but like you watch and it's like oh it's kind of a, a way, a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it, it's kind of a film within a film within a film. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it questions all characteristic traits. It has me leave and think, oh God, we do make an effort into creating a character that we want other people to perceive, right? Yeah. In ourselves. You know, you and I are doing it this very second. <laughs> yes, that's a great way to put it. That's a great way to put it. Well, um, Thank you so much, Rebecca, for talking to me today. And I can't wait for everyone to see this film. Thank you so much. Uh, me too. Thank you. Hello, Lisa. How are you doing today? Good. How are you doing, Trey? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm so excited to chat with you today. Um, first of all, congrats on this film um, launching soon. Um, that's so great. And I definitely enjoyed the film myself. So I wanted to ask you, first of all, what served as the basis and what were some of your initial ideas when you were crafting this, you know, noir, futuristic type film of sorts? You know, I have always been really fascinated by the idea of memory, which is in itself kind of a weird organic sci-fi concept, right? You're time traveling in your own head. Mm -hmm. But there is a degradation in the image quality of, of your <laughs> memories over time, right? Yeah. With the retelling and with the passage of time, it's hard to hold even your own personal narrative straight in your head. Mm -hmm. It just morphs. And I was thinking about how wonderful it would be if you could actually travel fully back to the memories that you most cherished, to feel them again and taste them and smell them and really immerse yourself in that time. Um, I thought, wouldn't so many people at least venture in there occasionally? Yeah, yeah. And how do you think your work on Westworld prepared you to work on this feature film, you know, writing, directing, producing, everything? Um, how do you think your work on Westworld prepared you for this? Uh, well, you know, for one thing, it allowed me to make incredible creative relationships and friendships that I literally transported from Westworld to the film. <laughs> so, you know, I worked with, of course, Tandaway and Angela Serafian on uh, both Reminiscence and Westworld. But also I worked with Paul Cameron, the DP of the pilot of Westworld and uh, Howard Cummings, our brilliant production designer. So having those relationships and that shorthand and that trust was really important to me and it made the entire thing far less intimidating. Uh, the other thing was just the technical confidence, I think, in having edited and cut and produced and directed mm -hmm. so many of these episodes. I knew what I wanted and how to get a lot of scope given 
a small amount of time, which is basically shoot everything practically. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me. I really enjoyed talking with you and I can't wait for everyone to see this film. Thank you so much, man. You take care, Trey. Thank you. Have a good one.